Welcome to Movie Caps. Today, I will show you an action thriller film from 2008, titled, Wanted. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a shot of an office celebration, where it seems like the staff is celebrating the birthday of the boss. Wesley Gibson, the main character, narrates the events, and tells the audience that his job title is of an account manager, and that he used to be called an account service representative. He then walks over to his desk and slightly kicks it. The scene then changes to a woman and man having sex on a kitchen counter. Wesley tells the audience, that it was his girlfriend, who was having an affair with his best friend. But he says that he doesn't seem to care, and the only thing he does care about, is that he isn't caring about anything, which worries him. He then types his name on Google, and sees that there are no results. He then recalls his father abandoning him, when he was just a week old. The shot then changes to a man walking into a building. He is named Mr. X, and is here to meet with a ballistic specialist, to learn who created a certain bullet for a competitor. She notices that the bullet is clean, in the sense, that it cannot be traced back to a specific pistol. Suddenly, a sniper from an adjacent building shoots the ballistic specialist in the head. Mr. X sees the adjacent roofs, and sees the snipers on the building. He starts running out of the room as bullets fly by him, and leaps out the window, and kills his opponents, by shooting them in mid-flight. He then gets a phone call, and says to the other person on the line, Cross, that no one leaves the fraternity. To which Cross responds, that they have a new perspective on the fraternity. Mr. X then says, that you cannot simply destroy something that has been there for a thousand years. Mr. X sees that he had been standing on a spot marked X, as he is shot by a multi-stage bullet, from across town. The path of the bullet is then shown in reverse order. Meanwhile, Gibson is woken from his sleep by his girlfriend, who is annoyed by the noise of the train next to their apartment. Gibson gets up, takes some antidepressants and then goes to the office, where his boss shouts at him, and then a co-worker asks if he knows where his friend is. He responds that he had to go to the dentist, knowing full well that he was at his apartment having sex with Gibson's girlfriend. Gibson encounters a mysterious woman one night in a drugstore, who tells him his father was an elite assassin, who was killed the day before. Gibson just responds that his father had abandoned him long ago. Suddenly, Cross appears on the scene, and the woman shoots at Cross, and then takes Gibson and managed to flee the ensuing shootout, and engage in a chaotic vehicle chase through Chicago streets. The lady takes Gibson to the headquarters of the fraternity, a hidden group of assassins dating back over a thousand years. Sloan, the group's commander formally presents Gibson to the lady from the night before, Fox, and encourages him to follow in his father's footsteps as an assassin. Sloan puts Gibson to the test, by having him shoot a fly's wings. He decapitates numerous flies, by shooting their wings off. Sloan claims he was able to do so, because when he's anxious, his heart beats 400 times per second. When Sloan asks whether he wants to learn how to manage it, he flees in terror. Gibson wakes up the following day, believing it was all a nightmare, but he discovers his father's rifle, and $3.6 million in his bank account. The same day he goes to the office, and shouts at his boss, beats up his colleague with a computer keyboard, creating the words fuck you with the letters and a tooth that bursts out of his colleague's mouth, and storms out. Gibson and Fox are then photographed on the top pages of multiple newspapers as wanted fugitives, in connection with the drugstore incident. Then he sees Fox, who has been waiting outside, and she offers him a lift back to the fraternity's headquarters, which is a rundown textile mill. Gibson is given instructions to kill individuals from the loom of fate, when his training is completed. The loom delivers the names of the targets, through a binary code, concealed in weaving faults of the cloth. Gibson has second thoughts about killing his victim while on his first job. In a flashback, he tells Fox, that killing individuals without knowing anything about them, or why they deserve to die, is wrong. Fox then tells a childhood story, about a judge who was conducting a critical case, when the defendant ordered his assassination. While they waited for her father to return home, a hired killer held the young girl at knife point. As the small daughter watched, the killer set fire to the father, and then seared his initials into her neck. The fraternity had targeted the guy who killed the judge, many weeks before the events of the narrative, but their assassin had failed to carry out his mission according to Fox. Kill one and maybe rescue hundreds, Fox then informs Gibson about the fraternity's plan. Gibson also sees letters tattooed on Fox's neck, as she prepares to depart, and understands the story was about her. Returning to the present, a second after this remembrance, Gibson bends a bullet trajectory to kill the target. When Sloan instructs Gibson to kill someone, Gibson always asks if the victim is Cross, since he is itching for vengeance. Sloan granted his desire at one point, since Cross is the next target. Although Fox believes it is too early, 
Sloan sends her another order, this time with Gibson as the target. Gibson and Fox head to Europe, the fraternity's first base of operations. Pekorsky is easily captured by the two, who compel him to accompany them to Cross. Gibson and Cross get into a fight aboard a moving train, as Fox chases after them in a car. When the train crosses a bridge over a steep ravine, Fox steals a car, and drives it into the train, causing the train to derail, killing innocent passengers. Cross saves Gibson's life, by catching his hand as he is about to fall into the ravine. At that moment, Gibson shoots him without hesitation. Before dying, Cross informs Gibson that he is his biological father, and that the fraternity has been deceiving him. Fox admits the facts, stating that Gibson was chosen because he was the only person Cross would not kill. Fox then informs Gibson of the kill order, and prepares to fire her weapon at him. Gibson, on the other hand, breaks the glass under him, and falls into the river below. Gibson wakes up in a flat, directly across the street from his previous residence. Pekorsky is there. He realizes that the flat belonged to his father, who had been watching him his whole life. Gibson is given a loom weaving by Pekorsky, and told to decipher it. Gibson is taken aback when he sees Sloan's name woven into the fabric. Pekorsky then reveals, that Sloan began producing his own targets, after realizing he was the next target set by the loom of fate, and after discovering this, Cross went rogue, and Sloan set the fraternity against him. After revealing everything, Pekorsky leaves after handing Gibson travel tickets, and telling him that his father hoped for him to have a peaceful life. Gibson discovers a secret chamber, containing all of his father's weaponry and maps when researching the apartment further. He even discovers a supply of the exterminator's mini-bombs, which leads him to believe that the exterminator was working with his father. After that, Gibson devises a strategy to eliminate Sloan and the fraternity. When Sloan walks into his office, he is surrounded by Fox, and her other expert assassins. Sloan is murdering for profit according to Gibson, by giving his men fake kill orders. He then tries to assassinate Sloan, but is stopped by Fox. Sloan then looks at Fox, and accepts everything that he has done. He then reveals, that the weaving had brought up all of their identities, and that he had just acted to protect them. He goes on to say, that if they genuinely believe in the code, they should put their lives on the line right now. Otherwise, Gibson should be killed. The other assassins plan to assassinate Gibson, but Fox turns on them. She curves a bullet to kill the assassins in a circle, then throws her gun to Gibson, before moving back into the trajectory of the bullet. Sloan manages to get away. Gibson, being impoverished once more, is at a loss for what to do with himself. While Gibson offers narration, we see a young guy, sitting in a cubicle in front of a computer, just like Gibson did at the start of the movie. Like at the beginning of the film, the guy puts the name Wesley Gibson into Google, but receives no results. Sloan comes brandishing a pistol, and aiming it at the man's head. At that point, the man turns around and stares down, revealing himself to be a decoy. Sloan looks down, and notices he is standing in a designated area. He then looks up and exclaims, oh fuck, before Gibson, who is miles away, shoots from the same window where his father murdered Mr. X at the start of the film. The bullet goes through an energy drink his former best buddy was holding, as well as through a donut his former boss was preparing to consume, and killing Sloan. Gibson then addresses us, providing an account of his previous six weeks as an assassin, adding, this is me reclaiming control over my life, what have you been up to lately? The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.